Hello, uh, welcome to today's lecture. What we um, discussed last time was basically um, the end part of the oxaziridine based reactions where we checked the um, reactivity of um, chiral as well as uh, achiral oxaziridines with uh, say uh, achiral enolates and chiral oxaziridines with uh, chiral enolates that means enolates coming from chiral substrates and the reaction with achiral oxaziridines. And we saw how the stereochemistry of the hydroxy group comes uh, based on the steric factors um, and of course polar factors depending on what substrate we take it. We also saw um, how um, camphor based reactions can be carried out to go to the chiral substrates with high enantiomeric purity based on high diastereoselectivity when we use the auxiliaries. Then uh, towards the end we discussed the uh, Barton uh, reaction which is the uh, oxidation at the unfunctionalized carbon. So uh, we will now proceed with the Barton reaction and related reactions uh, where the oxidation at unfunctionalized carbons can be carried out. As I discussed last time that it is more easy to do the reaction at the uh, uh, functionalized uh, uh, molecules which say for example if you have a carbonyl group here then alpha position is uh, very easy to deprotonate and introduce an electrophile. But when we have a substrate of uh, the kind that is shown here then of course if one wants to introduce uh, some oxidize or introduce some uh, electrophile at this position it is somewhat difficult. So what uh, Barton did was basically starting from a substrate of uh, this type here. Uh, basically what he did was to take the corresponding uh, hydroxy group here and react it with, with uh, a source of NO plus such as NOCl and that allows the formation of this molecule in which the oxygen nitrogen bond can be easily cleaved in a homolytic fashion if we photolyze it. So homolytic fission. So this is exactly what was done here. So we start with this particular uh, substrate which is derived from the corresponding hydroxy group and the idea was to introduce a functional group at this position. So we can prepare this and then photolyze it. During the photolysis the oxygen radical is formed and of course you have a nitroxy radical. This alkoxy radical then takes up the hydrogen from here via this 6 member transition state cyclic transition state and generate a radical at a very uh, remote position which is the uh, delta position. So if one starts numbering then you have an alpha, then you have a beta, then you have a gamma and then this is the delta position. So abstraction of hydrogen from delta carbon occurs because of the 6 member transition state here. Once this radical is formed then you are released uh, with a nitroxyl radical and this nitroxyl radical then, then combine here with the carbon radical to form this particular substrate where the NO group has come to an unfunctionalized 
delta carbon of this substrate. So generally a 6 member transition state of chair conformation is preferred though boat or semi chair forms are also invoked. It is generally expected that in the transition state the carbon, hydrogen and oxygen atoms are approximately linear. So if that happens then obviously what one expects is uh, that the uh, transfer of the uh, radical occurs from oxygen to a remote delta carbon. Now so the coplanarity is an important part. For example, if one starts to form the corresponding oxygen radical from the corresponding OH via the ONO type of molecule, then you generate a radical here like this. Now this radical obviously cannot form the 6 member transition state with this because you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is a 5 member transition state and not a 6 member transition state. The other possibility is that you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So you have a possibility of a 6 member transition state so that you can generate the radical at this position. But the distance and the uh, approach of the oxygen to the hydrogen if one looks at the model of this molecule it is not easy to form this radical because the distance between the oxygen and the delta carbon is too large for hydrogen abstraction. And therefore what happens is this particular uh, cleavage occurs in this fashion that you, you break it and generate a radical on this particular carbon atom. So if one uh, does not have a possibility of hydrogen abstraction then there is a possibility of this kind of CC bond cleavage. So you have a CC bond cleavage. Now because you have pr provided energy to the molecule and you have generated a radical so there is a cleavage if there is no abstraction of the hydrogen. If we use uh, iodine in the reaction medium as we discussed last uh, in the last part that we uh, nitroso radical attaches to the carbon and then, then O C and O bond is formed. If we use iodine for example this particular radical then interacts with the iodine and what is formed is basically this iodo compound and this iodo compound can allow the ether formation to take place or we can also oxidize this to corresponding aldehyde. So if we take this particular iodo compound and react it with a base then you generate a negative charge here that can attack to this uh, carbon and form the corresponding uh, tetrahydrofuran based product. On the other hand if we oxidize this alcohol to the corresponding aldehyde then we use a base then you can generate an anion alpha to the aldehyde and that undergoes an intramolecular reaction to form the corresponding cyclopropane. So if we use iodine then we have a possibility of a cyclopropane ring formation or a, a, an ether tetrahydrofuran type of uh, ether formation is also possible. Now what can also happen is uh, we can use uh, some other uh, reagent systems such as iodine and phenyl iodoacetate and uh, also have somewhat similar type of reactions as we discussed as you can see from here you have the proximity this there is a proximity of the two uh, particular centers here you have O1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So you have a 6 member transition state that can form the iodine PHIOAC 
twice that is phenyl iodiacetate gives uh, I plus and this I plus allows the OH to form OI and that undergoes cleavage. We will discuss this particular part little bit later. Now what can also do is that if, uh, if one gets the corresponding uh, molecule of this type when the NO dot has uh, reacted at this particular center here. So we get this. This is basically nothing but the uh, corresponding oxime because this molecule here is nothing but a nitroso and then that is in equilibrium with the corresponding oxime. So this oxime and this is basically an in equilibrium with each other. And one can cleave it under different conditions of uh, oxidizing or reducing uh, way by which you can cleave the oxime to the corresponding ketone. So what we have done it is we have started with uh, the uh, this kind of substrate coming from uh, say uh, here OH here and after the going through the nitrate ester what we have formed is the functionalization at the remote delta position. Now one can also do that if uh, is a uh, oxime of this type if R is equal to hydrogen then we can also the, do the dehydration that means if this R is hydrogen here instead of any alkyl group or phenyl group we can do the dehydration here under acidic conditions and heat it and one can get the corresponding nitrile which can be hydrolyzed to the corresponding acid and then if we use acid here and heat it and remove water then one can get the corresponding lactone. So even lactone formation can take place. So you have several such possibilities depending on what is the structure of the starting molecule. So you can get delta functionalization as I mentioned alpha, beta, gamma and delta a functionalization at delta position. So we can the proximity is an important part and how are we going to generate this uh, uh, oxygen radical which can form a 6 member transition state that is also an important part of it. Now let us take another example here for example you can have a hydrogen here and there is a hydrogen here and if uh, this substrate is photolyzed it is very clear that we can get the corresponding radical here that radical attracts the hydrogen radical form here and then eventually the oxime is formed at this stage. So uh, what is happening is uh, from here is very clear that you have the possibility of such a radical to form and this radical then leads to the corresponding next radical which is here and then this is attached by the NO radical to form the corresponding N double bond O which uh, then is in equilibrium with the corresponding oxime. And this is what the substrate that we have got it. This is the product that we have got it. Now if we uh, carry out under the acidic conditions the Beckman rearrangement then we can have <coughs> rearrangement then we can get this particular lactam. So this is a, a very interesting uh, method for functionalizing the uh, carbon atom which is uh, at, uh, remotely placed and then due to the proximity of the oxygen radical coming from this uh, particular part of the molecule and the corresponding hydrogen which is 
approachable one can functionalize at the unfunctionalized carbon atom. In a similar fashion like one of the previous examples I took is that we take this OH group here use uh, you know nitrosyl chloride pyridine functionalize it to make this particular OH group into the ONO part of it and then fertilize it and eventually this particular hydrogen can be converted to the corresponding oxime and this oxime can be hydrolyzed from here to the corresponding aldehyde that aldehyde is will exist as this lactol. Now this particular lactol has been converted uh, to the corresponding uh, such four member ring as you can see that there is a 1, 1, 2 then uh, 1, 2, 3 and 4 member ring this is the 4 member ring that is formed here which is what is this 4 member ring here. Then there is a methyl group here this is the methyl group here and then of course uh, then the other part of the molecule is eventually transformed into this particular side chains. And this is a molecule known as grandisol which is an insect pheromone that has been synthesized by using this Barton's uh, uh, photolytic uh, reaction of functionalizing at the unfunctionalized uh, carbon atom. So basically uh, it was dependent on the functionalization of this particular molecule at this uh, methyl group at the an unfunctionalized carbon. This uh, uh, Barton reaction has also been utilized uh, in many uh, steroidal uh, molecules. As you can see that corticosterone acetate here is uh, basically uh, a, having a hydroxy group at this position and you can convert into the corresponding ONO group here, fertilize it and then either this particular methyl group uh, can take the uh, hydrogen or even this between the two of them this particular methyl group appears to be uh, more easily approachable if one looks at the model then we can become very clear and then we can make the corresponding oxime and then again hydrolyze and make the corresponding lactol which is what is an aldosterone derivative. So basically what has been done is this particular methyl group which is uh, remotely placed but accessible for the 6 member transition state to form and that allows the aldosterone derivative to form. So it is a very easy way of converting a corticosterone to an aldosterone derivative. On the other hand if uh, this particular oxygen radical which is formed from this cleavage of this um, particular oxygen nitrogen bond that gives the radical uh, by abstraction of this particular methyl group here leads to the radical formation on this particular uh, methyl uh, carbon and that can undergo uh, uh, interestingly that can undergo attachment to this uh, carbon and this can move to this carbon forming 3 member cyclopropane ring and a radical on this carbon. So basically what is happening is you have a radical that is going to form on this particular part and then you have a 3 member ring which is like this. And now this reacts with the uh, NO radical, NO radical to form this oxime via the nitroso molecule to form the corresponding I can show in this fashion that this is how it is going to form. So this appears to be a side product but it is an interesting side product because such a reaction is uh, possible if the uh, other radical is formed. 
Now uh, there is another uh, very uh, celebrated example of uh, converting one of the steroid molecules called lanosterol to the corresponding uh, uh, molecule which is called as cycloartenol. If you look at the two uh, molecules you can see the difference. The only difference that you can see is that there is a, a cyclopropane ring here whereas that is not the case here. So there is a double bond which is present here and there is a methyl group that is present there in the lanosterol whereas that is not the case otherwise rest of the part is exactly same. So this one was uh, very uh, easily uh, converted the lanosterol was easily converted to cycloartenol in a very uh, specific fa fashion by Barton. Now how it is done is that you take the lanosterol as is here and this is the final molecule. Now what is done is this molecule is somehow converted to this particular carbonyl group. Now how can we do it? Obviously if we take this double bond here and this is the allylic position and this is the allylic position. So if we use a strong oxidizing agent we can introduce two carbonyl groups on both the sides one here and one here. This particular position is sterically hindered position because of the methyl group and is also known to be sterically hindered of a steroid molecule. But then we have to take care of this double bond we also have to take care of the hydroxy groups. So it was done in a very uh, specific manner by protecting this hydroxy group also by protection of the double bond and finally reducing the corresponding uh, double bond which is here as well as the carbonyl group that is going to come here. So basically it is a very specific way of uh, introducing the carbonyl group at this particular position by a few steps. But that was possible. Once that was done then without worrying about the protection and deprotection of the other groups once the carbonyl group was introduced here it was reduced and they got the corresponding hydroxy group like this which was through the ONO that is nitrosyl chloride and pyridine base and then photolysis in the presence of iodine led to the formation of the corresponding CH2I. So this particular methyl group which was having similar orientation as the hydroxy group which is beta. This is also beta oriented and therefore the abstraction 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 the hydrogen here and then when can prepare the corresponding radical and which in the presence of iodine leads to the corresponding CH2I. And now once this has happened then they used a strong base to deprotonate this particular hydrogen here and then this negative charge attacked onto this particular carbon to and then iodine goes as a leaving group and eventually the cyclopropane ring is formed here. So this is a very interesting celebrated example of uh, conversion of lanosterol to another molecule which is cyclo Artinol. Of course it is involved uh, many steps and protection and deprotection but it was a very brilliant example of the, uh, uh, the power of the Barton reaction. Now the alkoxy radicals can also be generated from hypohalides. Uh, so if we can take the hypohalite here and we do the photolysis here then we can generate the corresponding radical. So if that radical is formed here, a radical is formed here, this radical can pick up the hydrogen from here to form the corresponding uh, radical at this center and of course uh, you can get the uh, attachment of the chlorine from the substrate or via chlorine radical and of course you can get this. And now we have uh, a base which deprotonates and of course then that attacks onto this carbon and then one can get the tetrahydrofuran. One can also start to use hypoiodides that can be generated from the alcohols upon reaction with iodine in presence of 
lead tetraacetate or mercury oxide or iodobenzene diacetate. This is an example of that under these conditions at 40 degrees. For example, you can have the generation of oxygen radical from this OH and this is a beta oriented, this is also a beta oriented and then one can through the iodine mediated reaction can also have a connection between this particular oxygen and this carbon to form this 5 member ring. So, this is a 1, 2, 3, 4 and this 5. So, this very interesting such molecule having a tetrahydrofuran urine unit uh, embedded in the uh, steroid molecule by, by this reaction. So, this example is an extension or related reaction to the Barton reaction by using hypohalite, hypoiodite. Now, how do we uh, make use of the hypohalite based uh, chemistry in specific deprotection of a benzyl ether? Now, if we take a compound of this kind which has four different types of uh, benzyl ethers, a benzyl ether is nothing but an OCH2 phenyl group. Now, if we have these four types of uh, benzyl ether present in this particular molecule, and if we want specifically this particular O benzyl group to be deprotected to form this diol, then this particular chemistry of hypohalite based chemistry under photolytic condition allows the formation of this ketal, which can be hydrolyzed under acidic conditions to give this particular diol, which is what is a result of a specific deprotection of this particular benzyl group. Now, uh, what happens is that uh, when uh, this particular molecule uh, is allowed to react with N iodothalamide, then OH group here interacts with the iodonium ion here to form the hypoiodite uh, of this type. And now, when we do the photolysis, then this particular iodine oxygen bond undergoes uh, uh, cleavage uh, to uh, form the uh, oxygen radical here and of course, iodine radical will go away and this oxygen radical intramolecularly picks up the hydrogen from here as a hydrogen radical and becomes an OH group here at this position here like this and generate a radical here at the benzylic position because this radical is then stabilized by the phenyl ring also it is stabilized by the oxygen. Now, this particular radical then reacts with the same uh, hypoiodite which is he shown here and picks up the iodine radical from here and generate oxygen radical which is the same as this particular species. And once this hypoiodite uh, reacts with this radical leading to this iodo compound, then there is a intramolecular closure of this particular part of the molecule leading to the ketal of this type. Now, with this ketal of uh, uh, having three benzyl oxy groups can then be hydrolyzed under acidic conditions because these benzyl ether groups are stable under acidic conditions, but this ketal is uh, not stable and, and undergoes hydrolysis to form the corresponding diol. So, it means that we have started with a monohydroxy compound having four types of benzyloxy ethers and eventually we get a diol and with three benzyloxy groups intact. So, this is how a specific deprotection of a benzyl ether is done under these conditions. Uh, using hypoiodite based uh, uh, chemistry under photolytic conditions. This particular work has been reported in this journal, Chemistry European Journal in 2000. So, we will stop it at this stage today and take uh, some aspects of the Barton reaction, specifically the uh, beta cleavage, the CC bond cleavage in some synthetic transformations and then proceed further. We will stop and 
at this stage and we ex I expect that you will go through these things which I have taught today and I will see you the next time. Thank you.